455. Let's go. This is heavy for some pause plats. I got a 25 degree um, wedge right there, squat wedge from Rogue. And I'm wearing the Innovate heels, which are 0.6 inches in elevation. So someone can do the math on how elevated that is. This shit's steep. Let's get it up there. Let's get it up there. Let's go, baby. Breathe. Oh, yeah. Woo! Not doing those outside the rack anymore. Let's go. That was hard. I actually almost missed that. The sticking point's insane on those. You probably can't tell on video because whenever you do a narrow stance, anything, squat, bench, whatever, it looks really explosive and then you hit this egregious sticking point. That was, that was actually bad. I need to do those inside the squat rack. Don't try that at home, kids. This was a really fun training session. I wanted to give you guys a few pointers about how to program plat squats. I wanted to answer a few common questions I get about plat squats and the equipment I'm using. And I also again, want to cover the benefits of this exercise briefly. Now I have a whole video that goes thoroughly over why I do exercises like the plat squats and how this applies to powerlifting. So I'm going to keep that part short, but um, I am wearing squat shoes. A lot of people are asking, am I doing this in a squat shoe? That is a squat shoe there. That is my innovate squat shoe. Currently I'm not actually squatting in heels, but when I do my plat squats, I'm wearing a 0.6 inch heel. I don't know the centimeters. You guys would have to convert that your own on Google. Um, and then I'm on a 25 degree squat wedge from Rogue, which if you're going to do this exercise heavy, you should definitely get the one from Rogue because these could be very dangerous if that board broke on you. And I'd also recommend, like I said, in the end of the video, do not do these without rack supports in and do not go heavy on in your first year or two of doing these. You really need to build up your capacity in the knee joint to be able to handle this. I've been doing these since 2020. So I've had three years, three and a half years of trained adaptations in my knee joint to be able to handle these, these heavy. You, it doesn't mean you couldn't do them heavy in relation to what your strength is on this exercise when you first start, but this is something you're going to be heavily limited on. And I would always recommend introducing this into your repertoire with an extreme tempo and a pause in the bottom position. And really the first few weeks to months going super lights, because I don't want to hear about anyone tearing some knee joints up or having any bad incidents happen. I also would recommend always doing these bare. I think wearing a belt is fine, but you don't want knee sleeves here. The whole purpose of this is to actually try train the end range position of the knee joint. As far as programming is concerned, I really like this for singles up to five reps with a long time under tension through a tempo with a pause or some kind of creation or amalgamation of that. You can do these for just tempo. You can do this with a very long pause, but I like it for low to moderate reps. However, that is once you're trained at this exercise. In the beginning, everyone should do high reps with the tempo and probably still a pause. So when I first started doing this, I was using literally 95 to 135 pounds for sets of like eight to 12 reps with an extremely slow tempo and pause every single rep. So not meaning like the first rep, like every rep from start to finish was slow and controlled. And that's what really built up the resiliency. And then once I started getting better at this, that's when I started incorporating heavier loads. The overall benefits, guys, I've really covered a ton in other videos, but put really simplistically for the ending of this video, your knee's going to move really far forward. So this means you're going to have not just really strong quads, but quads that are strong, keeping your knees forward in a squat position. A lot of you guys ask how I squat so upright for being so tall and lanky in my high bar squat position. Besides the arching and bracing I talked about in my last video, it's this. It's really strong quads and glutes that help keep my knee and hip position forward underneath the bar. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Kick-ass PR. Just a quick video today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another thorough, in-depth video. We're going to be talking about some really fun stuff, so stay tuned on the channel.